Claire. I'm coming from my, my studio in Irene. Welcome back. It's another week of rulers and trying to help you get your quilting mojo back by giving you basic things to go and work on and just remind you what all this long arm quilting and free motion quilting is about. Talene's meant to be here today, but she's a little bit tied up, so I'm taking over. Uh, we're talking about these big boys, rulers with waves, wave rulers. They are the most amazing thing. Uh, you can do all kinds of different designs with them, not just spines for feathers, although Talene and I will be inclined to use them for a lot of that. Uh, we'll try and give you some designs, different ideas and things that you can do with these things, just to make your quilting that little bit more interesting and more special. Join me just now, I'm going to draw some pictures for you and you can see just what you can do with them. This is a Handy Quilter Wave C. I've just marked some bits on it so that you can see how to use it or some of the, the ways that you can use it. There's a lot of lines on it, but there are specific lines that are thicker. So if you look, I've actually drawn onto them, but if you look at your rulers, you should see that there's a thicker line up here that denotes where the center line is of that curve. Now, remember I said it looks a little weird, but you must remember you're always going to stitch that quarter of an inch away. So it appears like the, the center line is too high. When actual fact, if you add your quarter inch of um, the needle here and you deduct the quarter inch from the, the lower end of your wave, then that line is actually going to be in your center. So if you want to have a curve going through the center of a border or a center of a sashing, you can chalk in that center line and then always make sure that that line is on your chalk line and it's going to give you the wave in the middle of your area. On this wave at the bottom, it's a slightly deeper wave, so the line is in a different spot. The other thing to remember is it's always marked heavily in the center of the curve, in the, the highest and the lowest point of the curve. So if I take this ruler here, if I start on this point at the end there, it is going to be the lowest point of the curve. This is the highest point and I'm coming down to the lowest point. The advantage of that is I often want to quilt more than one ruler's length, or invariably, you're going to need to do that. So you're going to have to move your ruler. But if I keep my needle down at that point, which is on the end of that end line, and I just shift my ruler along so that it is perfectly in line with the needle again, here, and I keep my line here straight, then I should get exactly the same curve continuing on. So those lines are really important. You can either shift your ruler from the center point here to another one. This one is not so easy because there's only one wave in it. But if you have a ruler that has multiple waves, like we'll see just now, um, then you can shift from the, the high points as well as the low points. I use the this side of the ruler. This is the Wave F ruler of Handy Quilter. And I'm just gonna doodle. A lot of the time it's about what if. What if I do this? What if I do that? Um, that you just find different options. We often just get stuck doing the same thing all the time. So now I'm just moving the ruler to different places. I haven't got any specific plan to this. Um, and let's see what we come up with. Um, I kind of want something here. It seems like it's lacking over here. There. Move that one on to get the downward part. And maybe something there too. This. That on its own could be really cool, but if I wanted to, and I'm feeling a bit more energetic, I could go in and fill every other block. So remember that thing of having 
creating texture by having one part flat, one part puffy, one part flat. So that where I'm quilting now, that's going to be flat. The next one's going to be puffy. Then where it joins, this one's this one is flat. This one is puffy. So if this is flat, that's going to be puffy. That means this one here will be flat. There, that's going to be flat. You could do that as an all-over pattern, you could do it in a border. Again, there's a lot of quilting here, so you'd want it probably in a less busy fabric area so that you can actually see that the effort that you've put into it. It's not going to help you to do that on a very busy fabric because then you're not even going to see it. If you want to make it stand out more, you can even echo around here. Um, and you could use the ruler to do it as well. I'm just being lazy and doing it by eye it's going to make your pattern stand out that bit more okay for this last border here I'm going to use the wave F again and I'm going to use the deeper wave this is my center line here and I have a three inch border this time but I've marked two points so one is one and seven eighths from the top and one is one and seven eighth inches from the bottom so i've got a little line in the middle here what i'm going to do is put my center line over that and it's going to give me my echo so i'm going to quilt once this way so i've got my center line over the top line here i'm going to stop there I can move my ruler along, line up here and line up this end with my needle and I can carry on. Okay, so I've shifted my ruler down and now I've got the center of the wave over the second line and I'm going to call that one. So I've got now a kind of an echoed spine, if you like, or an echoed shape. And remember, it's not exactly the same because of that um, variation in the curve. Rulers are a lot about what if. What if I do this? What if I try that? So there's so many possibilities out there, and I can't teach you every single border. But when I was planning this one, I thought, hmm, what if I put kind of oval shapes, so elongated pebbles? on either side of this spine. How's that going to look? So let's try. and I think I definitely quilted in a border. <laughs> 